Welcome, this is my latest video in my series on the FL Sun Q5 3D printer. So I'm new to 3D printing, so I'm making these videos so you can follow along with me as I learn this. So if you find this video helpful, I'll put a link below to this printer and the hardware I'm using. So I have the FL Sun Q5, I have Raspberry Pi, and then I'll use a webcam, and we're going to be setting up OctoPrint. So OctoPrint is software you can run on a computer, and in this case a Raspberry Pi, that you can use to send prints to your printer, you can monitor prints, do time lapses, things like that. And as I said before, I don't have a lot of experience with this. I did install it once, I haven't printed from it yet. We'll be walking through this together. So the first thing you want to do is go to the Raspberry Pi website and go to Downloads. And you may have already done this, but you want to download the Raspberry Pi Imager and they have it for Windows, Mac, or Ubuntu. So I've already done that and installed it. Next, you want to go to OctoPrint and then go to Download. And you can see OctoPi here. So we'll click on this link here. That'll take us to the download page. If I scroll down a little bit, you can see it says Octopi, download Octopi. So if you hit that, that will download Octopi to your computer. So I'll close this. So I have Raspberry Pi Imager up here. I'll click Choose OS. I'll scroll down, click Use Custom. Typically, you'll want to go to your downloads folder if you've just downloaded it. I moved it onto my server, so it's in a different location from where you might have it. But you want to look for this Octopi. This one is Buster Light. If you're watching this five years from now, it might be a different name, but same idea. Select that. And you'll notice this is zipped. So typically when you download a zipped file, you might unzip it so you can use it. But the Raspberry Pi Imager can handle zipped files just fine. So hit open, then choose SD card. And I have the SD card in already. It's the 32 gigabyte Samsung Endurance Pro Plus, I think. So if you have lots of drives here, one thing you can do is leave the card out and then plug it in after you open up this dialog box and you'll see it will be added to the list. So I'll select that, then I'll hit write. It will ask me for my password, so I'll type that in. And now it will write the drive and verify it. So that'll take a little while, so I'll speed up the video now. Okay, that finished up, so I'll hit continue. I can close out of this and I can take the SD card out of my computer and I'll plug it into my Raspberry Pi. So my Raspberry Pi is plugged into Ethernet. I have a webcam plugged into it. It's a Logitech webcam, but you can use any webcam that supports, I think it's UVC is what it's called. It's any traditional webcam should work. And I have the FL Sun plugged in with the printer cable that came with it to USB. So you can also set this up with Wi-Fi. I'm not doing that in this video, but that is an option. If you need help with that, you can let me know. I could make a video on that too. So I'm going to start this up. Okay, so Octopi is loaded. We have a login prompt here. So this works just like regular Raspberry Pi OS. But if you see on the screen, it will tell you the IP address of the Raspberry Pi and how you can access it via a web browser. So I'll open up a web browser. I'll type that IP address in, and this will open up Octoprint. So I showed you that little blurb of the screen of the Raspberry Pi, but everything else is going to be done with a web browser from here on out. So we have the setup wizard. It says hello. I'll hit next. It says access control. So you can set up access control on this with a username and password, or you can disable access control. And there's lots of warnings here telling you not to disable access control. And that's so people can't get into your printer. You wouldn't want someone hacking into your printer and then doing something that could maybe start a fire by overriding things or break it. You know, you could send it codes to do all sorts of things and that would be bad. So they warn you not to disable access control. But this is a video tutorial, so I'm going to disable access control because if I were to set credentials in this video, I would overwrite them anyway later. So I would highly recommend you do use the access controls. It says, are you sure? I'll say proceed. I'll hit next. It says configure anonymous usage tracking. I'm going to say disable that. I'll hit next. It says configure the connectivity check. I'll say disable the connectivity check. I'll hit next. It says configure plugin blacklist processing. I'll enable that. That should make it a little safer. I'll hit next. It says select your printer profile. So I'll type in FL Sun space Q5. Next we have print bed and build volume. This has a circular bed. It's heated. It does not have a heated chamber. The diameter and the height are both 200 millimeters, so I'll keep those as default. Then we have this custom bounding box. I'll leave that unchecked. I'll hit next. And it says your OctoPrint installation is now all set up and ready to go. It says you should never leave your printer unattended. You can read through all the safety things here. And I'll hit finish. It says please reload, so I'll hit reload now. So this is a new install, so it's going to say there's an update available. So I'll run that, I'll say update now, I'll hit proceed. So every once in a while an update can break things, so I like to run it right away, and then I can configure it. I wouldn't want to go through all the configuration and then run the update and have it break something. If it breaks something after updating and I haven't set it up yet, I can always start from scratch easily and then not update it.
So while this is updating, I'm going to set up some G code to run on this. So I'm going to open up Cura, and I'll go into my finder, and I downloaded a skull. I'll open that up. So here are the parts. For some reason, this isn't rendering properly in Quick View. So I'll go into Cura, I'll go to Open Files, I'll open up the folder with the skull, I'll go to Files, and I'm going to print the skull first. So I'll hit Open. I'll click on my settings here. I turned infill off for the last print, so on this one I'll turn it back on. I'll do 10% infill. I have support turned on, it definitely needs support. And in a previous video I talked about setting up the retract on this. Let's see if I can find that quickly. So the retraction is set to eight millimeters and the speed is set to 80 millimeters per second on these three settings. So I don't want to print this full size. Let me slice this real quick. So that says it's going to take two hours and 55 minutes. I want to print this a little faster and I'm okay with it being smaller. So on the left here, I'll click on this second option for scale and I have uniform scaling on and I'll just change one of these to 50%. It will change all of them to 50%. And I need to make sure I do this with the lower jaw too. Now when I slice it, we'll see it should be a lot faster. So that's 36 minutes now. I like that better. So I'll hit save to file. I'll save that in here. Next, I'll open up the bottom part the mandible. I'll get rid of the skull. I'll put the mandible in the center here. I'll scale it 50%. I'll slice it. That only says six minutes. I'll save that to a file. And I'll save that out. So if I go back here, it's ready to reload. So I'll hit reload now. Okay, so I have the printer off. I'm going to turn it on now. I'll hit connect. So it sees the printer. I want to upload some files, so I'll go down below. I'll hit Upload. I'll select my G code files. It's only letting me do one at a time, so I'll do that. I'll say Choose. I'll upload the top part now. So here we have the temperature. If I click on the next tab, we have Control. And here we can see the camera. So I'm going to adjust this so it's a little lower, maybe like that, it fell. Okay, so I think I like that. I don't see any preheat controls on here, so I'm going to do that on the printer. We can look at these other tabs. We have G-Code Viewer here. I imagine I have to load something first. Next we have Terminal. This, these are the commands I think that are being sent to the printer. And we have Time Lapse. So I'm going to turn the Time Lapse mode to On Z Change. So what this will do is it will take a picture after every layer, so you'll get a really cool effect doing this. I'm not sure if this ups the print time or not. I guess we'll find out. So I'm going to save changes here, and it looks like our time lapse will show up down below here. So I'll go back to control. If I go down to the files here, I'll go to the skull, I'll hover over here, it looks like that's download, move, remove, load, load and print. So I'm guessing I'll hit load and print. While I'm waiting for this to heat up, Okay, it's heating up now. I want to hit this extrude and squirt out a little bit of filament since I just loaded it. Let's see if that works. Okay, so it's squirting out some filament. The camera's not quite picking it up. It's too close. So the bed and the extruder are heated up properly now, so I'm going to clean off that filament I just squirted out. On Octoprint, I'm going to go down here to the skull and I'll hit the print icon. It loaded it up here. It says we're doing a time lapse. It says we're going to use 2.27 meters of filament. It's going to take 40 minutes and we can print. So I will hit the print button. Okay, I'm going to stop the screen recording as of right now and then I'll come back when it's finished. Okay, so I lied, I'm coming back mid print. I want to go over some of the things we can monitor here. And I don't think I mentioned that you don't have to have a web browser open while you're printing. So I could close this and I was actually up in another room watching this on a different computer. You do need to have the Raspberry Pi on. The Raspberry Pi is sending the G code to the printer, but this can be closed down and opened up at will. So on the left here, we have the print time. This is counting up. So we've been printing 22 minutes. The print time left is 24 minutes and it's printed 1.5 megabytes of 3.1 megabytes. On the top here, we're on control. So we're watching this. I don't know what would happen. These look like they're grayed out, so I can't click on these, which is good. Looks like I can turn the fan on and off maybe. 
If I go here to the left to temperature, we'll see the temperature, and it's pretty steady. That's pretty impressive, actually. If I go to G-Code Viewer, we'll see the build plate, and we can see where it's actually printing. So here you can go to previous layer, next layer. If we go down, it has the model size, estimated layer height, print time, layers of extrusion. So this has 160 layers, so I think our time lapse should be 160 frames, if I'm understanding that correctly. Layer info says layer 64. Is that what we're printing now, maybe? Layer height, G-code command, filament, print time. Then we have render options. It says sync with job progress, center viewpoint on model, zoom in on model, show moves, show retracts, show approximate print head position, also show previous layer, also show current layer, and also show next layer. So we, oh, we can zoom in on this so we can actually watch as it's printing. It's kind of neat. Next we have terminal. So this is actually the G code that it's sending to the printer. You can see all these sends and receives. Then of course we have our time lapse. And nothing is shown up here, which I wouldn't expect it to be. So I'll go back to control. Okay, I'm going to stop the video now, and then we'll come back when it's done, unless I think of something else to say. Okay, it's finished, so it's homing the printer. Okay, a message popped up that said it was rendering the time lapse, and you shouldn't start another print while it's doing that. So I'll go to time lapse here. We can see if we can download that. It's pretty tiny which doesn't surprise me because there aren't many frames that it was taking a picture of. There it is. So I don't know if there's G-code or something where you could have the print head move out of the way. I don't know that I'd like that either because the print quality probably wouldn't be as good with all those gaps in there. But it is. it does look like it's taking a picture for every Z height. It looks cooler at the top there. So I'm going to let this cool down and take it off and I'll print the bottom half and then we'll check it out. Okay, so I got the print off. I'm not sure why the camera is not updating here. It looks like it's still on there, but it's not. So if I go to temperature here, it looks like I can preheat. So I'm going to go here and I'll say set this to PLA and set this to PLA. Yep, and it is preheating. So the display on the printer itself doesn't really change. It looks like it does when you turn it on. And it has on the left, top left, you can see the extruder and the top middle you see the bed and then on the right you see the fan and it shows the temperatures on there so it's showing it heating up on there just like it is here. So if you're done using Octoprint you can go up here to this and say shut down the system. You'd want to do that before you turn it off. There's also some settings here. Let's see what we have. Lots of things here. I'm not going to go through this in this video. It is nice to know that with the defaults it did work for the most part. So once this gets up to temperature, which it should be pretty soon, I'll start on the mandible. Okay, I refreshed the page and now it's updating the time lapse. Okay, so I'm going to stop this and we'll take a look at the print it's printed so far. Okay, I have the print here. There's a lot of support material on here. So I'm going to figure out how I'm going to remove that. I think I might start with an X-Acto knife. I gotta be careful I don't poke these into my eye or shoot them into my eye. So the eye sockets look like they come out here. You have to be careful prying with an X-Acto knife because you can break the tip off very easily. I'm going to try this uh, Harbor Freight pick. One downside of printing things small is it can be hard to remove all these supports. I may have to look at the model to make sure I don't take off anything that shouldn't be taken off here. I'll see if anything pops off easily. Okay, so I was looking at the model and a lot of this needs to come off of here. So I'm not sure where to start. I guess I'll just try and uh, pry it off somehow. I think this is supposed to separate right around here, but it's kind of hard to tell. Okay, so the mandible's done printing. It's right here. So I don't know if I'll be able to clean that out very well. It's really hard to do. My eyes aren't very good at looking at stuff this tiny, especially black. There's not a lot of contrast. But 
That's what we printed right there. <laughs> Little skull. So it would have been easier if I printed it at full size, but uh, I didn't want to take four hours or whatever it was going to take to get that all printed just for this video. Because this video is about Octoprint. So I really liked Octoprint. I think I'm going to keep using it. I might switch it over to one of my older, like Raspberry Pi 3s, so I can free up my Raspberry Pi 4 for other things. But I thought it was really neat to be able to monitor my prints from anywhere from my phone. If you have a VPN set up wherever your Octoprint is set up, then you can go from anywhere on the internet and check it. Although you're not supposed to leave it unattended. So if you were to, for some reason, leave it unattended, you might want to put some sort of remote switch on it so you can just kill power. I use like a Belkin Wemo is one I use. I know Amazon makes them for the uh, their device that I have on my wall that I don't want to say the name of uh, that you could use to shut things off remotely. So, so that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.